what's up, Brian? It's your boy, Mike Muse. Welcome to the episode of the Mike Muse Show. I'm going to get to it. I have the incredible Tamara Mari Housley. And uh, we've been warming up. Uh, we've done a pre-interview, which should have been the interview for like 15 minutes now. <laughs> Just so you know, it's my first time meeting her. And I literally am obsessed. I am already her biggest fan. I went from like loving her from afar, but like now I'm a fan. And like, I want to be her friend. And I want to oh, come to her house. And I want to hang out with her crew. And hey. her team in the side, in the background is off the chain fun, I can tell. Um, Tamara yeah. is dope, y'all. She has so many projects going on. And the part we were joking about was y'all were so worried about getting Sierra's prayer for Russell Wilson. And shout out to Sierra and Russell Wilson. But let me tell you, we got it all wrong. We didn't need the prayer that Tamara asked to get her Baker's Dozen, a Santa Stakeout, Table yes. Wars, Housley Century's Oak Widery, and Barnhouse Napa Bruce. Oh, and the residual checks from all her other projects when she was like nine years old. What are we doing? On bed. <laughs> what are we doing with what our lives? I, I am, I mean, <laughs> I'm a prayer warrior. I will tell you that. Um, yeah. I get it from my grandmother who passed it on down to my mother. And uh, now I'm passing it on down to, to my kids. And, you know, at times we can get so busy that we forget to sit still. And you ask, you have not because you ask not. That's, hey. that's one of the things, yep that my mom, you know, she taught me at a very young age. And so that's what I do. I sit there, I pray, I start off honestly, just being grateful, grateful for, yeah. for, for life, grateful for the basics. And I feel like that's what we kind of have missed out on. I, I feel everyone wants, you know, a lot of the material things, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, but, but, but let's just talk about the basics, your health, health as well, uh, food, uh, shelter. So yeah. I start with a grateful heart. So I thank mm. God. And then, um, you know, I, I asked for wisdom and yeah. common sense is the sisterhood of wisdom. And we like that. Too. Come on. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, well, and, then merit, like, right, and a manifest. Mm -hmm. My mom is listening to this. So what up, mom? I love you. My dad's listening. I love both of y'all. I love the book of I feel like we went to the wrong church. I felt like we were not at Tamara's church. <laughs> like, is you coaching? Is you Pentecostal? Like, what denomination did you grow up in? Even if you're non-dominational now, it's spiritual. Well, I'm yeah. just curious. But. I, I will tell you this. My my grandmother, she was an evangelist. See? And uh, she she said, you know what, Tamara? You, you are one too. And I was like, really? Uh, but I want to be an actress. I want to be. And she goes, no, honey, you could you could be an evangelist. And, it, you know, my, you know, the pews are, you know, one thing, but you can also be, be, be an evangelist, you know, out, 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 and, you know, in the, in the world and yeah. do what you love to do. So I was like, okay, all right, there you go. That, there we go. I grew up Baptist, but uh, shout out to all the evangelists, the Baptists, the Pentecostal, the Kojics, the Catholics, the Jews, yes. the Muslims, all the things, all the things, all the things. So real quick, Tamara, I'm going to take you from heaven and, <laughs> and sainthood to center life because I didn't know you had this vineyard, this wine vineyard. Why did I not know this? And how come your team did me a bottle of wine to sample? And I know you're not here oh to talk gosh. about it. Okay. But yo, let's go. I know, right? Okay. Well, this is how it started. I married into it. I will tell you that. Um, oh, but I am the type of rare. wife, right? <laughs> but I'm the type of wife I didn't want to just like sit back. I love wine. I, I I wanted to learn a little bit more about it. And uh, my father-in-law, he actually was going to sell the winery. And my husband and I looked at each other and we were like, mm, maybe we should take it over. <laughs> and so that's how I got the winery. Just, just, yeah, as simple as that. But I literally, I wanted to learn a little bit more about it. It's actually a lot of hard work. Yes, it's it's very classy and chic, you know, yeah. to say that that I own a winery. But at the same time, I had to, you know, my husband has this amazing business, uh, uh, like mind. He he just gets it, like putting on his underwear. It's it's it, it comes very easy to him. Uh, but just the process of making wine, it, it's, it's chemistry. It's a lot of hard work. It, and this, this is a family owned boutique winery. So there isn't a lot of mass production. So we don't have all of these machines, all of these workers. It's us. 
And that's what's fun um, about it, even though it is hard work. But I will tell you this, there's a lot of love that goes Mm. into that wine. And the quality is amazing. And we wanted to make sure that uh, we appeal to everybody. So our price range is not crazy. It's not crazy Mm. at all. That's amazing. Yeah. And that's why people, you know, they love it. You can actually have a really amazing good glass of wine and be able to afford it. Because I've had great. nasty, really expensive wine. I'll tell you that. Same here. An audience, she's not here to promote this. I'm making her talk about this now. And audience, you know, I never know what question I'm going to ask my guests. But Tamara's energy just came on so strong. I'm like, yo, let's just roll with all your projects. But we're going to focus on Table Wars for your team yes. that's listening. Table Wars. We will get to Table Wars. But Tamara, to me, represents. And Tamara, I love talking about all entrepreneurship. Uh, but, but Tamara has a way of connecting dots in her career and kind of going for it and seeing opportunity, just even audience within the narrative asked her about the wine, she just saw opportunity and she went for it. I think for a lot of times, Tamara, far too often, we see the opportunity, but we're too afraid of it. You know, Tamara never didn't have any wine background. She's not a sommelier, right? But yet here she is now a wine owner because she saw the moment. And for me, Tamara, the lesson is never be afraid of the moment, right? And then you step into it. And also, you know, uh, the key thing is I always, if your passion um, kind of connects to a need out there in the world, like our coffee shop, we really didn't have a coffee house that was elegant, sexy, and just a vibe Mm -hmm. out in downtown Napa. But I learned to love coffee, having two kids and, and being married to a husband that doesn't know how to sit down. I was like, <laughs> I, I need coffee. There is a need out here. It became a passion. You put those two together and boom, there's an opportunity. Oh. And you always have to, you know, know that you have to take a risk, but make sure your mind and your heart are both in the same place, right? So you have to be smart about it. You have to save. You have to save uh, some money or like work hard, get a job, put some money aside, and, and it, it could take, it could take years, but I always say wherever there's life, there's hope, you know, and you don't know when that next avenue or that next opportunity is going to show up. So you show up daily, show up daily mm. with, with that passion and uh, eventually it'll, it'll work out. And that's, that's where I am now. The audience, the takeaway, I, I guess I'm your translator to Mary, like in the okay. takeaway years, right? <laughs> I love it. And for, and for day, today's takeaway by, by Tamara, um, is what I'm taking away from that, Tamara, is far too often those who are curious about being entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs, they try and like be the next, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Tesla, whatever the next thing is. But what I'm gathering from you is just be who you are. It is kind of already in our authentic selves. Like you just love wine, so you went for it more. You love coffee, you had the need, so you went for it more. A lot of times what we want to be an entrepreneur is of is already inside of us. But I think there's so often we're trying to like search for these things that are not us. Oh and that's why a lot God. of us fail. You, you nailed it. And my sister and I, we talk about this, you know, um, you know, being, even though we're twins individually, we have our own niche, right? Mm-hmm. And we learn to celebrate those, those differences. So there is only one Tamara. There is only one Tia. There is only one Mike. So you have to own that uniqueness and use it. That's what's going to set you apart from anyone else. And if twins can do it. Hey, you can too. Identical (laughs) twins, you can too. Mm-hmm. I just realized why we're friends in my head and why we're okay. be best friends. At least for the next 25 minutes, we're going to be best friends for the next 25 minutes. Okay. Is we both love the same thing. I love wine. I love iced black coffee. And mm-hmm. I am a coffee aficionado. I eat snot because I drink it black. I can take the profile of the coffee. Yeah. And so, like, I'm really always on a hunt for the really great iced black coffee. Um, well, so, I think that's why we're connected. Off. Then when you come to Napa, I'm obsessed because they're, yeah. they're local uh, coffee beans. We keep, you know, everything as clean as we possibly can. That's another thing. Yeah. You know, I, I'm naturally that person. So, yep. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, and, she, and she's not here for that. She's, I, 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 but I love to she recognized that we're not here for any of those things that we just talked about. We're really here for table wars, but I'm going to make sure I give her the promotion for it. Uh, the brewery is called Housley Uh-oh. Century Oak Winery. 
Um, and then the brewery is called Barnhouse Napa Brews. So if you ever find yourself in Napa, make sure you go to uh, Century Oak Winery and then uh, Barnhouse Napa Brews. Uh, support her, support local, support goodness and good energy and good people and support my best friend the next 25 yes. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tamara, I, I want to move on because to me, this signals what I enjoy about the concept of Table Wars. And okay. I'm noticing a connectivity between you is everything is social and communal and how to commune over food and wine. So I love going out to, to restaurants with my friends and drinking a bottle of wine for conversation. Yep. I love, let's let's grab a cup of coffee uh -oh. for conversation. I literally brought an iced espresso machine just so I can have friends over and do like iced espressos, you know, in the really afternoon. Because it's all about, for me, the art of conversation. I love running my mouth on TV, on camera, on the radio, but also just in my crib, right? Which can annoy my friends. I talk too much. Um, but all those things are important. And when you are doing like something like Table Wars, and ladies and gentlemen, Table Wars is on uh, Discovery Plus. Uh, it's this new fantastic show that uh, Tamara is uh, co-hosting and is the, the host of it with two incredible individuals, Martha Stewart and Kevin Haas. Did I get his name right? Uh, Chris Hesney. So Chris well, I was Hesney. close, but not yeah. close. <laughs> Chris Hesney <laughs> um, and Martha Stewart. And... Uh, you hit the nail on the head. The reason why I think we vibe is because we do love the same things. And for me, when I am eating, I'm a foodie. Um, when I am eating, when I'm having, you know, that cup of coffee, when I'm having that glass of wine, it's all about the experience. It's not just me drinking wine or, or you know, eating food. I, I love the whole ambiance. I love the whole experience. And that is what tablescaping is all about. When, yeah. And I didn't even know what I love to do actually had a term for it. And that's tablescaping. I, all, I love to entertain. When I, whenever we would host uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, or even Halloween, oh my goodness, the table is set. The food um, reflects the season and <laughs> the, even the drinks, even the drinks. Um, so that's what tablescaping is all, uh, you know, about. You have a theme, you know, you have a, you, you, you have a wedding, you have a birthday party. You want that table and the, the vibe, the ambiance to reflect that. But not only that, what I loved about these tablescapes is that, you know, there's always going to be a conversation, you know, piece, because you're usually, you know, sitting next to someone that you just met at the party. And the whole point is to get them talking, to get them vibing before the food and everything comes out, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, and, and that's what this show showcases. We had tons of designers, whether they were, you know, wedding event uh, designers, whether they were set designers, you know, for shows, parade designers. It was just so cool to see them in this huge, you know, gorgeous warehouse in New York and have a plethora of amazing materials and to see what they put together, my mind was blown. And of course, to be with the one and only Miss Martha Stewart was. <laughs> Yo, I've seen the episode already. And let me tell you, audience, it is a treat. I mean, one, because the is amazing and this is my best friend, I'm 25 minutes. Uh, but then also two, is because of what these artists were able to create was just genius. Um, but then three, Tamara, nothing beats the petty clapback game of Martha Stewart. Like she just can't help herself. And I love a person who can't help themselves. <laughs> Let I me just it. tell you, I experienced I it. it and it was <laughs> off camera first. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was like, you're in my spot. And I was like, you know what? You would be correct. <laughs> you're right. You was right, Martha. I am you're in right. your spot. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what I love about her is she, what you see is what you get. You know, if she likes something, she's going to let you know. If she doesn't, she's going to let you know. And most of the time she's right. She, she knows her stuff. 
And I want like the, the, the young people coming up to really get what I'm saying right now about Miss Martha. And this is the reason why she's really, she's successful and she's had longevity. It's because she is who she says she is. If she's, if she is, she, she knows how to, you know, cook and, and, and make drinks, she can do it herself. It's not something that she, she just learned to create a brand for herself. No, she is Martha Stewart. She knows every flower possible in the world. This woman made us bread pudding at 7 a.m. in the morning. Wow. And she's 80. <laughs> she, don't even, she, don't even, she rode her bike to set. She, she doesn't even look 80. She has better eyesight and better memory than I do. And I don't know if that's a good thing for me, but she's a unicorn. I will tell you that. Miss Martha Stewart is a unicorn. <laughs> hey Mary, you are making my really? whole day, man. I, I, I literally love you. Okay. I'll tell you to Mary because you just said something I wasn't thinking about. And the, the, the tablescape, uh, that might be a big fancy word we're using. Audience, that's just a place setting we're talking about. You know what I mean? Like the centerpiece, the, the table, the setting, the napkins, whatever. Um, it can be a way as an icebreaker. And I never thought about that because I gotta be honest with you, as much as I love people and love having wine and coffee, I only like doing that with like one to two people max. I don't like group dinners. I, I, if it's more than four, I usually would turn down the invite, right? Because you can't get intimate. You can't, you know, really get into a person. Uh, and then sometimes you may get stuck to the person you're left into, right? And they're awful. Not just people, they, just, they, they, they can't, you they may be introverted. Yeah. Yeah, 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 the energy is maybe off. But, when you have things you can talk about that's on the table, it cre you're so right. It creates conversation. So I learned that at my wedding, actually. And, mm -hmm. you know, the whole thing about a wedding is bringing two, you know, families and friends together that have, you know, the friends probably have never, you know, met. I mean, we had like over 300 people. It, it was a lot of people. That's a big and, wedding. Uh, yes, a big wedding. And, and they mostly came from my husband's side. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, my thing was I wanted everyone to, <laughs> to really, you know, um, get to know each other. And I will tell you this, people became friends at our wedding and that was 10 years ago. And they're still friends. They're oh, still that's friends. Great. So it worked. So we wanted to create this ambiance where people, one, put their guards down. You know, it was very sophisticated and elegant, but they felt at home. They felt, they mm. felt um, at, at, at peace and felt comfortable to, to actually talk to each other. And that is what tablescaping does. Yes. You, you, you know, you sit down and you're like, oh, wow, look at those twinkly lights. Aren't those awesome? Mm. See how they did that? I would have never yeah. thought they hung that upside down like that. And then boom, you open up a conversation. Ah, so I talk to you a little bit. I, I, don't, I don't have much time with you, love. I know your team's going crazy. Uh, I've got this wind down. Okay. I think I have like about five more minutes with you. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about moments and experiences? Because my audience, and they get a kick out of me, uh, my Instagram. They, they love to see me posting high, low things. Like, so I will, you know, post a picture of me being on a private jet all the way down to me just like walking on the street, like laying in the grass, right? And so, but I don't do that. And my audience knows this. They they don't want to flex, but it's to show uh, what is possible, um, and and to take audience on a journey into really just we can appreciate every moment in life. I'm just curious as someone who does love to entertain, yes. uh, who does love wine, and who loves coffee and loves to be social. Talk to me, and you know, there's something what, what triggered this is about you know how you create you know your tablescapes for your home and for the holidays and just maybe a Sunday dinner. Talk to us a little bit about your version of like just living life to the fullest and in the moments. Like, what do these moments give to you, right? What does it do for you? That's a better way to say it. Well, for me, because I have a lot of things going on, me living my best life is learning to be present. And it's kind of like mm. what, you know, you just said, living in the moment and realizing, I'll say, that, I'll say it again. It's living in the present moment with gratitude. Ooh. Because 
circumstances around us, they, it's inevitable that they will always change, right? It's, 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 it's just life. And sometimes you may have, I always say plot twist or, or well, we got to pivot. <laughs> That's what I learned in making films. I was like, well, we're just going to pivot. And when you, <laughs> when you use those words, it, 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 it doesn't, you don't think of it negatively. You think of it, life is happening to me. Um, life is happening for me, not to me. So when I'm living in that present state of gratitude, that's what gives me, you know, oh my goodness, I am living my, my best life because I can see the things around me that, that, I'm, that I'm grateful for. That is life, life. Ah. Um, you know, we've, we've lost so many people because of, of COVID and, you know, we don't know when our time is, 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 is going to be up. So by losing one of the, the two most amazing people in my life, uh, three years ago, I learned the importance of now and uh. seeing the, the, I'm an optimist, seeing the positive, um, aspect in life, even though this is, oh Lord, here, I'm going to go preaching, even in the most, um, I would say, even in your struggles, let, let's, let's, let's not let that define and validate me. We're going to use this struggle, use this, this, this moment to actually make me stronger. And one day I'm not going through all of this for myself. I'm going through this to have a testimony to be able to help someone else in this particular instance and that's what I mean like that's 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 how I live my 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 best life it's it's all uh, about my perception of, that is of, so of good. living my life right I, I knew you could take a really big question that I asked you that that I never asked anyone before uh that's why I was like kind of try to get to the, the the question part and just really nail it. Cause that's, that's what I was going to. And it's about, you nailed it when you said that living my best life is living in gratitude. And when you're living your best life and you're in gratitude, it doesn't matter the moment, right? And it, it's about the experience and the journey. Like even last Saturday, and I'm gonna close audience, even the last Saturday I did was, I hadn't seen one of my friends in a while, to your point, connecting with people, don't take life for granted, life is short. I was standing in line by myself. I had a craving for pancakes on Saturday morning. I was standing in line by myself. I was like a half hour. I texted one of my homies. We were trying to kick out. I was like, yo, I'm in line for a half hour. If you can get here, get here. Sidebar, I'm in my pajamas. I look crazy. I have on a hat, a jacket, and pajamas, but come through. Yeah. We literally, Tamara went from like this hole in the wall diner pancakes to end up going to this fancy like bar that sells like infused ice cream with liquor. <laughs> and I was like, afterwards, I was like, yo, I want to go to a dive bar now. Let's go grab a beer and just talk yeah. trash at this dive bar around the corner. And that's what we did for three hours. It was a total of like maybe tw 10 hours. I was in my pajamas the whole time. He, <laughs> you board. carpe diemed. You seized the day. That yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That That is... You know, and sometimes we always want to control things. And, and whenever we control, 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 you can actually miss one of the most amazing moments you can have in your life. And that's what I learned. Tamara, I love you. Thank you for being my best friend these past 25 minutes. I never had a best friend 25 minutes that impactful. And just thank you. <laughs> Audience, You're awesome. Please get into all the things that Tamara is doing, but in particular, uh, <laughs> Table Wars. Uh, it premieres November 15th. So make sure you set your calendars, you learn, set your DVR, go to it. You would not be disappointed. And let's just uplift her and celebrate her and like keep wishing her a success mm -hmm. on all her projects. And so I, mm -hmm. as, as someone of the church, I, I would say, I stand in prayer with you. And when two or more are being there, agree, there shall the Lord yes. shall be. So yeah, yeah. Right. Like, thank you, Tamara, for bringing such a good sport. You're good amazing. I can't wait to have you back again sometime. I will come back anytime. Okay. All right, team. You heard her say that. Don't blame me. <laughs> All right, Tamara. Yeah. Have a great day. Thank buddy. you.